Good morning. My name is uh, Pastor T.W. Brown of the Greater Mount Calvary Baptist Church of the Borkin Bruton Community. Um, I bring you greetings on this uh, early Sunday morning. Um, this morning, uh, we come to you with uh, heavy hearts, uh, heavy laden hearts. Um, we give our condolences to the uh, Brazil Bryant family as uh, um, the Miss uh, Cynthia Bryant has uh, passed passed on. We uh, went to her memorial uh, service on uh, yesterday. Uh, we're also happy to say that uh, thank you for your prayers. Uh, Miss Spears is uh, back home. Um, we will be going to visit her um, later on this afternoon um, and still practicing social distancing. Um, when I say I'm going to visit someone, um, I have special N95 masks. So please um, don't take, don't think that I take uh, the social distancing and the and the masking uh, lightly. Um, I do have the special mask and things of that nature. So when you go to visit people or you go to take care of people or you're trying to do your churchly duty, please don't be passing along the coronavirus. Um, I hope everyone's ready to um, go to work. Amen. Um, today we'll be in uh, Matthew 26. Um, we're going to be revisiting a scripture that we preached on, I think, three, four Sundays ago. I don't write these down, so I'm going to be honest. I don't remember exactly what the title of that sermon was. Um, but um, I do, based on the fact that I've underlined some things in my Bible, know that uh, we must have preached from this section not too long ago. Um, so, um, if you will turn with me from uh, to Matthew 26, verse 36, and um, the verse reads, it says, Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. Um, then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane and said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. You've heard the reading of Matthew verse 26 and verse 36. Um, and again, I usually read from the NIV, um, trying to make it very plain for everybody. If you want to go back and read from KJV or whatever version, um, that, that, that will be fine. Um, someone asked me uh, what commentaries I use. Um, there, there's no particular commentary. Um, whatever commentary you particularly uh, like, um, I'm, I'm, uh, um, I think it's a uh, Mark Henry, I think is, is the name of the uh, commentary I use, um, but I'm not sure. I, um, whatever whatever I can find the answer that I'm looking for, um, that's what I use. So there, there is nobody that I endorse or, or anything along those lines. Uh, um, just study um, and keep looking. Um, and uh, whoever your mentor is, ask that person. Um, whoever you aspire to uh, teach like, if there's someone in your uh, general setting that you like the way that they teach or the way that they um, 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 break the word out, um, ask them. Um, amen. Um, so let's bow our heads in prayer. Our Father, child in heaven, we come to you this day. Dear Father, thank you for um, what you're about to do, Lord. So right now we ask that you come in all the houses around the land, Lord, all the places where my voice is going out, Lord. Lord, thank you for this internet, Lord, Lord, that allows all of us all over the world to be together right now in service, Lord, be it Sunday, Monday, or Tuesday, Lord, when this service is going out, Lord. Lord, right now, I pray that you allow our hands to touch right now, even though we're in separate rooms, Lord, even though we're not in a church building, Lord. Lord, the church has grown so much stronger through this pandemic, Lord, Lord, because right now, we're able to pastor the masses through this, this medium, Lord. So right now, we thank you, Lord, in your son Jesus' name. Amen, amen. All right, let's get to it. So today, um, quite interesting. Um, today, um, or or as as I was studying and uh, completing my studies, uh, I, I realized that um, God showed me why He has done the things in my life that He has done. Um, why um, the things that have happened have happened. Why um, I, I have I have and have not received things that I thought I should and. Why I didn't receive some things? Why I didn't receive some things that I thought I should, and why I received some things that I thought I shouldn't. Um, so, um, just just pay close attention. I'm gonna try to um, talk slowly because I really need you to understand um, 
this scripture. And it's a very interesting scripture. Um, and, and I don't know if I've, I've ever broken it completely out before, just the, the praying portions of this. Um, so today, the title of the sermon is When God's Will Isn't My Will. When God's Will Isn't My Will. Because we always say, um, uh, God, let your will be done. Um, so the title of the lesson is When God's Will Isn't My Will. So in uh, Matthew 26, verse 36, um, we're right after the, um, the end of the Lord's Supper. So the Lord's Supper starts at verse 26 and concludes at around verse 29. Um, and at the end of verse, uh, well, it concludes at around the end of verse 29. And now Jesus and uh, the three of the inner circle, Peter, James, and John are the sons of thunder, um, have uh, gone out to the Garden of Gethsemane. And, and if you remember from our previous sermon, uh, Gethsemane stands for the oil press or the, uh, um, uh, or the place of pressing of the oil. And uh, he goes out to the Garden of Gethsemane, which is uh, uh, right up, not, not far from um, where he's going to be uh, crucified. Okay, so, so you can actually see across um, if you... you if you have some way where you can you can Google where where Jesus is is uh, actually crucified, um, you can see that the Garden of Gethsemane is literally right across um, in in eye distance from where he is crucified from Jerusalem. But anyways, so he goes to the uh, Garden of Gethsemane and he's going there for prayer. Now. Uh, I've always found this this quite in, in, interesting that that Jesus is going for prayer. So if you remember reading at the beginning of Matthew, uh, Jesus goes down into the water um, to be baptized, and as he comes out of the water, um, the 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 heavens open, and and uh, God literally says, "This is my Son, whom I'm well pleased." The dove uh, lights on him, and we believe this to be the Holy Ghost lighting on him. So at that moment, he receives the Holy Spirit, and directly after this, he is tempted by the devil. So you're tempted in, so you must be tempted out. All right. You're tempted in. So into salvation, you're, you're tempted or into this world, you're tempted. So um, don't think that the devil is just going to let you get out without temptation. So um, now I need you to realize that so far, Jesus has not been afraid of death. He knows that that is what he's here for. He knows that he came here to die for your sins and mine. He knows that, that there is a heaven. He can remember what heaven looks like. He knows that it's a beautiful place. He speaks of heaven uh, fluently throughout um, his, his movements um, through these this 80 mile radius. Um, and, and he knows what death is all about. Um, we even know that he knows that there's a such thing as a, as a resurrection and, and he knows that it's possible because he's seen the boy at Nan uh, be risen from the from the dead. Um, um, he's seen Lazarus risen from the dead, and and I believe Lazarus was on day four, and he knows he's only gonna have to be in the day uh, in the grave for three days. So he knows that this is possible. Um, so so I find it quite interesting that when we get down here to this garden, that all of a sudden his ideals start to change. Because um, if you remember over in John 14, if you remember in John 14, right after uh, he predicts uh, uh, Peter's uh, denial of him and Peter says that I will die for you, Jesus, um, uh, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place. He says, let not your hearts be troubled. Um, he that believeth in me um, also believeth in the Lord. I go to prepare a place. Um, and he starts talking about the, that heaven has many mansions and all of these things, Okay. So he's telling the disciples that he's about to die. He doesn't want them to worry. And he also, in not wanting them to worry, he starts to describe heaven. Okay. So I want you to, I need you to, to, to put a pen in that because he's telling them, don't be afraid of my death. Everything's going to be okay. I remember what heaven looks like. It's a good place. And then he goes on to say, Peter, remember, I taught you how to get to heaven. You can get there too. You know the way. I want y'all to go when, you, when we get through with this and read John 14, and you'll see that he actually tells Peter, you know how to get there. Don't worry. Now, this almost directly contradicts what we're about to read in, in, in uh, Matthew 26 and 36. 
So in Matthew 26 and 36, and I'm, I'm going to read it uh, Well, because well, no, it's too long and I don't want to take up my time. But in Matthew 26 and 36, we find that, that Jesus walks into the Garden of Gethsemane and he walks in for prayer. Now, in Matthew 26 and verse 28, at the end of the Lord's Supper, we first start talking about this cup because he's going to talk about a bitter cup in a minute. So we're going to need a context of the cup in order to talk about the bitter cup in a minute. So verse 28 says, um, all of you drink from it, all of you, or this for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for which is poured out for forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I, I being Jesus, will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink of it new with you in my father's kingdom. All right. So Jesus said that this new wine, this new wine that he's talking about right here, this blood wine, this saving wine, he said he can't drink of this wine just yet. He says he's going to get to drink of it. He says, but he gets, he has to wait until he gets to heaven. So right here, right before he goes to the garden of Gethsemane, he knows that he's going to heaven. He knows that he's going to drink of the sweet wine one day. He says, but he knows right now he can't drink it. So as he crosses over the garden of Gethsemane, remember I said, tempted in, tempted out. All right. So he's going to be, the sins of the world are going to be laid on him. So he has to take our sins to the cross, right? Right? Everybody says that Jesus bared all of our sins alone. All of our sins to bear, right? That's what your, your deacon says when, when he's up there uh, during devotion. So he's about to take our sins to the cross. So when he goes to the Garden of Gethsemane, he goes and he takes his, his three friends of the inner circle, Peter, James, and John, or, or the Sons of Thunder, um, and, and he goes in and uh, he tells them, I'm about to go over here and pray. So he tells them, I want y'all to stay alert. And, and it literally says these words. It says that, um, sit here while I go over there and pray. And he took with him, Peter and the sons of Zebedee, that's James and John, and began to be grieved and distressed. All right. So sin is starting to come on him. All right. So he's starting to receive all of our sins because he started to take our feelings and our emotions on because you got to remember that this is Jesus. All right. So he's part human and, and he's part he's part God and, and, and he's been transfigured. So he started to change, getting ready to go up to heaven. But now he has to take on all of our sins so he can be the, the, the blood sacrifice for all the things that we've done, but he must take on all of these things in order for us to be saved. So now he's starting to take on all of our feelings and all of our emotions. He says, so all of a sudden now, the same Jesus that just told Peter, he said, let not your heart be troubled. This is Jesus said this. He now says, he said, he began to be grieved and distressed. Grieved and distressed. He said, then he said to them, my soul so Jesus had a soul. He had a soul. So I need you to know that he was human and, and his soul was deeply grieved to the point of death. And he said, he said, y'all stay here and watch for me. So Jesus was so grieved, so depressed, so hurt. He was starting to take on all the emotions all the sins, all the problems of the world, things were starting to get overwhelming for him. He was starting to take on the, the prostitute's problems. He was starting to take on the thoughts of, of the husband that, that couldn't take care of his family. He was starting to take on the leper's thoughts of the fact that he didn't look like everybody else. He was starting to take on the slave's mentality. He was starting to take on on, on, on the child that, 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 that daddy had left him's thoughts. He was starting to think on, take on the wife whose husband beat her. He was starting to take on all of these emotions, all of these sins, all of the husbands that whooped up on their wives. He was starting to take on all the lies and, and all of the thieves and all of these sins were starting to come on him all at once. So they came on him all so bad that he said, sometimes things get so bad in your life that you can't even take your inner circle with you. Peter, James, and John had been everywhere. They were literally called the inner circle. But 
He couldn't even take the inner circle over here to pray with him. He said, I need y'all to stay over here. Y'all just watch for me. I, I got to go over here to a little special place and pray by myself because for you all that are that are real proud people that, that have been through some things like I've been through some things that it's been some times that there's some stuff that have happened in my life that I couldn't tell my dad about. There were some things that have happened in my life that I couldn't tell my mom about. There are some things that that have happened inside of my marriage that I couldn't even talk to my wife about. And I had to tell all of them, I need y'all to sit over here. And, and it's not that, that I don't trust you. It's not that I don't love you. It's, it's not that I don't want to let you in to what's going on in my life. But right now, what's going on is so overwhelming that... I can't even articulate. I can't even, I can't even conjugate. I can't even get out what's going on. I can't even form in words to get it over to you what's going on. I need God to help me. I need him to understand what my will is. I need to just get somewhere so I can talk to God by myself and tell him, Lord, I need some help. Lord, I need to tell you what's going on in my life. I need to tell you that every night when I go to bed, I cry myself to sleep. I need to tell you that, Lord, if I could just pay one bill, not even all the bills, just one bill. Lord, I want to feed my babies. I go to work every week. And when you add all my checks up, I have to take my first two-week check and put it with my second two-week check to pay one week worth of bills, Lord. And that just won't do. And my children wonder why they friends got all this stuff and we can't even keep our lights on, Lord. Lord, I need to tell you what my will is, Lord. I, 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 I had all this stuff happen to me and I just need you to know that right now, I'm overwhelmed. I can't take it. I have an inner circle. I have friends. And I believe they praying people and they didn't ate with me. They didn't sup with me. They didn't drink with me. But Lord, I can't talk to them. They don't understand. They don't feel the way I feel. They don't cry the way I cry. They, they didn't lose their mama. They didn't lose their daddy. They, they not the breadwinner of the family. They didn't go through what I went through. So Lord, I'm going to go over here and I just need to pray for a minute. And if you will, Lord, tell them to leave me alone and just let me pray. So it said his soul was deeply grieved and he went over and he prayed by himself. And he said he went a little beyond them and fell on his face. And he prayed saying, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me. Now, in the King James, it calls that cup bitter to let you know that it's not the same cup that we were talking about in verse 28. Verse 28 was new wine. This is bitter wine. So in verse 28, the cup that he was drinking out of was a saving cup that they had uh, that he was talking about would represent salvation that was going to rep represent eternal life in heaven. He wanted you to know that this was a sinful cup. When he drunk from this cup, this cup would hold all of the sins of the nation. This would be a painful cup. This cup would represent all of the bad stuff that had happened in the world and he would have to take all of this on to take it to a cross and it would hurt. It, it, would, it would literally, physically, spiritually, emotionally hurt. And he wanted to say, he said, Lord, can I pass this up? He said, yet not as I will. He said, this is what I want. But I not only want it to be what I want, Lord, he said, he said, not as I will, but as you will. He said, not only do I, I want it, but I want you to want it for me. So what he said is, he said, Lord, I want my will to be your will. He said, right now, Lord, I'm in a bind. But the first time I'm feeling all these sins, I'm feeling all this bad stuff and it's overwhelming. <laughs> He said, and I done told these boys, let not your heart be troubled. He said, but the first time my heart is troubled. 
He said, and, and this cup is bitter. Now, remember every time in the Bible that we cross over water, water is the crossing place. In the Old Testament, when we cross the Red Sea, we cross from Egypt to a new place. When we cross the Jordan River, we cross from the, the wilderness into the promised land. Now, we're about to cross over from, from, from needing uh, uh, sacrificial lambs to having, inter having an eternal uh, uh, sacrificial lamb in Jesus and having an opportunity for eternal life in heaven. So we're about to cross over the bitter cup, all right? So we're about to cross this water. So what Jesus is saying right here is he's saying the exact same thing that Moses said. So as Moses stood at the Red Sea with the Egyptians at his back and water at his front, he turned to God and said, my God, my God, will you please, Lord, take us over? Will you part this Red Sea so we can cross over on dry land? That's what he asked. So right now, Jesus is saying, Lord, Will you part this bitter cup, Lord, so I can cross over on dry land? But what I need y'all to understand is every time that you pray, your will won't be done. All right? So, so often, preachers preach it, deacons pray it, prayer warriors say it as if, if you pray long enough, if you pray hard enough, after a while, if you just keep saying it over and over and over again like a mantra, after a while, God is going to hear it the way that you said it, and somehow you're going to bend God's ear to your will. So if your baby is sick, and just because you want your baby to live, your baby is going to live just because you prayed it. Um, if your money is funny, and, and you got a bad job, and your job makes minimum wage, and you lost that job, and you had no money saved up, that if you pray long enough, somehow God is just going to keep your lights on. Um, or, 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 or if your marriage is bad, and that man been whooping on you, that just because you pray long enough, he just going to stop whooping on you. Or if an accident happened, and you had a limb that was literally severed from your body, if you pray long enough, and keep looking at that limb, they'll tell you, just pray, you just pray, and I prayed, and the Lord came, and I got an answer. Well, I'm sorry to say that sometimes God's will and your will ain't the same will. So Jesus prayed. He said, Lord, I want this cup taken away. It's bitter. I don't want it. This sin is more than I can handle. These problems are more than this physical body can handle. And I don't know about y'all, but I'm finna have a personal moment here. It's been some times in my life where things that have happened to me have been more than I can handle. And I done prayed to the Lord and I said, Lord, fix it. And when I woke up the next morning, I had the same problem that I had when I went to bed. I've had some marital problems that... I got on my knees and my wife and I were locked hand in hand and we prayed and we said, Lord, fix it. And when we woke up the next morning, we had the same problem we had when we went to bed. I've had some family problems and me and my family have prayed together. And when we went to bed and when we woke up the next morning, we had the same problems that we had when we went to bed. Because sometimes our will and God's will don't line up. And I don't care how many times you ask the Lord, Lord, take this bitter cup away. When you drink it, it ain't new wine. It's the same wine that you had yesterday. It's the same wine that you had last week. It's still bitter. You're still broke. If you didn't have but one leg when you went to bed, when you woke up the next morning, you still had one leg. Because I'm sorry to say that prayer outside of a miracle, outside of the outside of a miracle, and I'll define that at the end of this sermon. And I won't don't nobody turn off right now. Because somebody's saying, he 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 making me not want to pray. That's why you gotta wait all the way to the end. Prayer, prayer does not change God's will. Prayer does not change God's 
will. Okay? Okay. All right. I need you to hear that. Because that's going to stop some people from killing themselves. Because see, the reason that people get so depressed is because they keep waiting on what they ask God to do for him to hear them and for God to do it just the way they asked. And when they wake up and God didn't do it for them or he didn't do it exactly the way they said, they get more depressed. And it's the end of the cycle. And you just keep going back and you keep praying the exact same thing. And when you look down at your leg and it ain't grow back and you look at your bank account and ain't no money there. And every night that man that was whooping you still whooping you. And the child that was drug addicted still drug addicted. And the marriage that was bad still bad. And the child that was crazy still crazy. And the boss that was treating you bad still treating you bad. And the scar that you got on your face still is a scar. And the burn that you had is still a burn. You get depressed. Jesus said, you can hear it in his voice. He was depressed. So he got up off of his knees. And he went back out to talk to his friends. And he found that they weren't even paying him any attention. They weren't worried. They weren't, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't praying with him. They weren't praying for him. And that's why I say that sometimes you, 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 you have to, you have to go and, and, and do this on your own because everybody else has their own subset of problems. It was late at night. Peter, James, and John was tired. And you have to realize that um, your problems ain't everybody's problems. Uh, these guys had their own problems. It was late and they were tired. I don't know what they did during the day other than the Lord's Supper. And, and some of them were out looking for somewhere to have the Lord's Supper. And they had walked and they weren't Jesus. Okay, they just wasn't Jesus. And and I want to say this, uh, uh, people aren't you. So they're not up because they're not worried about what you're worried about. They're sleeping because they might have been up during the daytime worried about whatever they're worried about. But don't get mad at Peter, James, and John because they wasn't up worried about the fact that Jesus had to be crucified. Peter didn't have to be crucified. James and John weren't going to be crucified. I'm not even sure if they had a complete understanding of the totality of what was about to happen. So that's, 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 that's what I'm trying to get across right here. The reason your friends aren't all in on your prayers is because a lot of times they don't have a complete understanding of what's even going on. So give them a pass. In verse 42, we say, it says that Jesus went back again to pray. It said he went away again a second time and he prayed saying, my father... If this cannot pass away unless I drink it. So somewhere between uh, verse 39 and verse 42, Jesus figured out that his will and God's will wasn't lining up. He figured out that somewhere in there that his will and God's will wasn't lining up. That just because he was sad because of his situation didn't mean that his will and God's will was lining up. They weren't lining up. So he didn't ask God to change his situation. He asked God to change him in his situation. Did y'all hear that? Hear that? Now that's going to stop somebody from killing themselves right now. That changed my depression. So I had a depression because it was something that I had prayed for my entire life. That wasn't going right. I was starting to get depressed because it looked like it wasn't going to be. But it wasn't going to be the way I wanted it to be. The way that I was praying it to be. And when it wasn't the way that I prayed it, it wasn't my will. It wasn't the way that I was willing it. I started to say that God wasn't listening to me. But God don't have to listen to me. It's my job to listen to God. So when, when, when things aren't lining up, it's not God's job to line up with you. It's your job to line up with God. I, I love it when people say, I've been praying to the Lord and it's like he ain't listening. Wait a minute, God always listening. So if things aren't lining up, it's not that God's not lining up with you. 
you say, God, my wheels ain't lining up. Well, if God and your wheel ain't lining up, it ain't God's wheel that's wrong, baby. It's your wheel that ain't lining up. So it said that he went back to prayer again because somewhere in there when he went out there, he realized that he was the only person that was worried and he was the only person that was awake. He said, let me go back and repray this thing because our wheels ain't lining up. He said, and I'm calling him the father. He said, and if I'm calling him the father and I don't even have the power to keep my friends awake. Think about that now. He Jesus, but he don't even have the power to keep his friends awake. He said, let me go back and pray this thing different because my will and God's will are not lining up. Now, I want somebody to just pause your message right now. Pause it. Pause it for about two minutes. And whatever it is that you're thinking about in your, in your life right now, I want you to ask yourself that question. Every night when you pray and you wake up and things ain't changed, is it because you trying to make God line up with you instead of you lining up with God? Now, I, when you unpause, I want you to start lining up, start lining up. So in verse, in verse 42, Jesus started lining up with God. He said, and he went away again a second time and he prayed, saying, my father, <clears throat> if it can't pass. Because he didn't realize that God's will is this cup ain't going to pass. And he said so in verse 28. In verse 28, he said, I got to go to heaven. And he know he got to cross the water, which is the cup, to get to heaven. So he know the cup can't pass. He said, if the cup can't pass, he said, he said, if it can't pass, if the cup can't pass, he said, unless I drink it, then your, your will be done. Your will be done. But listen to me. That sounds good. That sounds real good, Pastor. That sounds real good. But he's human. Remember that he's human right now. With, don't, don't think of him as a Jesus up in heaven. He's human. So he had to come back and pray a third time because what I'm asking you to do is not natural. It's not natural to fall into the will of God. He had to come back again and say, this cup bitter. I'm going to die. I'm going to be beaten till heaven get tired. They're going to pierce my side. They're going to hang me high. They're going to stretch me wide. They're going to take me away from my mama. My brothers and sisters are not going to come. They're not even going to think enough of me to give me my own tune. All this for people that don't even care enough about me to do right. See, it's hard sometimes to line up with God's will because in your human mind, you can't see far enough ahead to understand God's will. You can't understand why you got one leg. You can't understand why, why, why you broke. You can't understand why you're getting beat. You can't understand why you got burned. You, you can't understand why your child is drug addicted. You, you can't understand why your marriage is falling apart. You, you can't understand why, why your family is crazy. You, you can't understand why some of y'all have all of the things I just said going on all at once. You, you can't understand it. And you start praying for God to change all of those things instead of asking God to change you in those things. So I end with this. I end with this. I end with this. And I want y'all to listen to this closely. So when I first came out of school, um, me and my wife were, we, we were making, we, financially we were doing fine as far as the amount of money coming in the house was fine. Um, our marriage should have been fine. Nobody was cheating. Nobody was, was doing it bad. I wasn't hitting her. She wasn't hitting me. We weren't cussing. We weren't hollering. None of those things. But our marriage just wasn't happy. No reasoning. Can't tell you why it wasn't happy. To this day, we don't know. Just wasn't happy. If you looked in our bank account at the end of the month, there was nothing there. We can't tell you why. We have nothing to show for it. There was just nothing there. We have sat trying to figure out where the money went. We don't know. It was just nothing there. This went on for about three to four years. We slowly grew apart. 
in our house. We were in a house together, sleeping in the same bed, and we were not talking to each other. We were passing in the night. Nobody cheating, nobody beating, nobody hollering, none of that stuff. Just not truly loving each other, not really liking each other. Finances awry, our family lives, our outside families, they were okay. Not great, not bad. I didn't dislike my family. She didn't dislike her family. Nothing like that, but just not what people on the outside thought was going on. And things just slowly spiraled out of control. We never talked about divorce or anything, but it was just not happy. And I kept praying for God to fix and do and fix and do. And it was just so depressing that Everybody on the outside thought I had this fantastic life and it was it was slowly just getting horrible. And finally, I started to realize that it wasn't my situation that needed fixing. I needed to change in my situation. So I became closer to God. I started to pray more. I started to get in his will so I could better understand what he needed me to see in this he needed me to be able to understand how people can make money and not have any money. How people can have a supposed perfect, perfect life and not be happy. How people can supposedly have everything and not have anything. He needed me to be able to see all these things, all of that. So one day, I could have one phone call with one guy that I'd never met to let him know that everything was going to be okay. That I too have been through what you're going through. And when I finally lined up with the will of God, it all worked out for my good. So if you have one leg, all of that, all the depression, all the stuff you went through was for that one day where you looked across the aisle and there was one guy over there that was struggling. And you said, come on, let me show you how to get through this. If you got burned, just for that one day, so you can look across the aisle and you see the little girl over there that's struggling because she doesn't think she's pretty anymore. And you can walk over and say, baby, you look beautiful. Come on, let me show you where I get my wigs from. If you think that your marriage was tore up and you made it through, you finally got in God's will and you made it. It was so, you could, Walk over to that lady that's getting beat every night and say, come on, baby, let me show you how to get out. Let me show you how to have self-worth. Let me show you how to line up with God's will so you can know that you don't have to take this every night. Let me, let me pull you in and show you that God loves you through all of this. See, we all think it's all about us. And as long as Jesus was praying about himself, as long as he was talking about him and his cup and his body and his this and his that, he was not in God's will. But the moment that he said, I will drink for the betterment of the people, he started to line up. I realized that God didn't allow me to do anything so I could do anything. It was always for the betterment of others. If you make any money, it's for the betterment of others. If you can sing, it's for the betterment of others. If something bad happened to you, I know this sounds crazy. It's for the betterment of somebody else because someday you're going to meet somebody that went through the same thing that you're going through. It is your job. It is your duty to walk over and say, I too am going through or have gone through what you're going through. And I just want to look you in your eye and say, you can make it. It is not your will. It will never be your will. It is God's will be done. May we buy his. I follow you to heaven. We come to you this day, damn it, Father. Just say this simple word. Thank you. Amen.